If nobody had to open your lips and brush your teeth this morning, and nobody had to lean you forward on a potty to clean you up this morning, and you walked in here with your own strength and I can't thank him enough for the little, you, you know, you would, think, you would think it's the big things, but it's the little things that people take for granted that most people aren't thankful for until they lose them. Most people don't love you till you're gone, thank you till you can't hear, appreciate you until you stepped out of the way. They don't thank God for feet until they've lost a leg. But while you have your stuff, I know, I know the person beside you wouldn't understand, but just tell them I'm thanking God for my stuff. Yeah, all of my stuff. Just, just my sense and my sight and my, my kneecaps and my eyeballs. And I'm thanking God for my kidneys and my liver. And I'm thanking God for my lungs. Thank you for my esophagus. Thank you for my cranium, my skull. Uh, my Lord Oblong God, I thank you for, for my spine and my tissues and my corpuscles and my ligaments and my hair follicles and thank you. Oh, oh, if y'all don't hear what I'm saying. Mm. Don't get me to thanking God. I'll keep you here all day. Amen. I want you to turn to the book of Acts where I will just take just a moment to talk to you out of the word of God. If you would stand for the reading of the word, I won't bother you to stand anymore. And if you stand anymore after that, it's because you stood. But if you're not handicapped or uh, crippled or carrying a baby, we ask you to stand out of respect for the word of God. I see people all over the world stand for everything and everybody else. Then when it comes to the word of God, they're too tired. The President of the United States walked in the room, everybody would stand. Thank you, Jesus. But one even greater than that is here. He is the great I am, the mighty God and the Prince of Peace. Glory to God. We're going to be in the 14th chapter of the book of Acts. The 14th chapter of the book of Acts, beginning at verse 8. And I ask you for a little bit of water, if I could. 14th chapter of the book of Acts, beginning at verse 8. And uh, I'm going to read down through verse 15, and then we'll pick up again and read verse 19 and 20. It's not really a traditional uh, Easter Sunday message. Um, if you were observant, you, you have actually seen dramatized before you an Easter Sunday message. And to repeat it would be redundant. We understand that he died and that he rose again with all power in his hands. The issue before us today, particularly my brothers and sisters, as we live in a society where Christianity is being uh, attacked and, and in many cases uh, liquidated and, 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 and becoming mixed and infiltrated with so much carnality and other things, it is important that we begin to teach people what that resurrection means to us. not just the historical value, but the personal significance of what your faith means to you. I'm glad, I'm thankful to be a Christian, to be washed in the blood of the Lamb, to know that my sins have been forgiven is a wonderful thing. Thing. And God is going to do something extraordinary because we believe. Somebody say extraordinary. extraordinary. 
let's go into this word beginning at verse 8 are you ready are you ready and there sat a certain man at Lystra impotent in his feet being a cripple from his mother's womb who never had walked the same heard Paul speak who steadfastly beholding him and perceiving that he had faith to be healed said with a loud voice stand upright on thy feet and he leaped and walked and when the people saw what Paul had done, they lifted up their voices, saying in the speech of Lachneria, the gods are come down to us in the likeness of men. And they called Barnabas Jupiter and Paul Mercuritus because he was the chief speaker. Then the priest of Jupiter, which was before their city, brought oxen and garlands unto the gates and would have done sacrifice with the people which when the apostles Barnabas and Paul heard of, they rent their clothes and ran in among the people crying out and saying, Sirs, why do ye these things? We also are men of like passions with you and preach unto you that ye should turn from these vanities unto the living God which made heaven and earth and sea and all things that are therein. Are you with me? Go to verse 19. And there came hither certain Jews from Antioch and Iconium who persuaded the people and having stoned Paul drew him out of the city supposing he had been dead. How be it? As the disciples stood round about him, he rose up. Mm. And came into the city. And the next day he departed with Barnabas to Derbe. Can you say amen? Look at your neighbor before we pray and just, just by faith tell them God is going to do something extraordinary in your life. See if they believe it. Just check them, see if they believe it. Something extraordinary in your life. Can you believe God for something extraordinary? in your life. Let's pray. Father, I thank you for the rich opportunity that you've afforded me to share with your people the word of God. The flower fades, the grass withers, but the word of the Lord shall stand forever. And I ask you, Lord, in the name of Jesus, to just speak something in this place that's life-changing, thirst-quenching, mind-renewing, soul-cleansing words of truth. I thank you because you're God and you can do anything but fail. Have your way in the midst of your people today. In Jesus' name, amen. You may be seated in the presence of God. There are only four little brief points that I want to talk to you about and I won't be uh, before you a long time. I'll release you to go about whatever you have planned to do for this particular day. But I want to begin by sharing with you how important faith is to have, how significant it is to have it in your life, and, and how relevant it is. And, and, and to this end, there are some principles that I want to share with you that I think are extremely significant in order for you to be prepared for what God is going to do in your life. I start out by telling you that God is going to do something extraordinary in your life, and you have to believe that. Me saying that, the Word of God saying that is not going to be enough to make this a relevant message. You have to believe that. You have to believe that people who come to service do so because they believe God for extraordinary things in their life. If I only were expecting ordinary things, I wouldn't go to church. I don't need church to live an ordinary life. If everything that I can hope to have out of this life is just the same things that everybody else has in the whole wide world, I don't need this. It is my belief in the extraordinary, extraordinary, supernatural, 
beyond human reasoning blessing of God that drives me out to the house of God to learn more of his word, to learn more of what he thinks about me, to learn what he has in store for me. And so don't ever think for one moment that people who frequent the house of God do so because they are weak or because they are spineless or because they have nothing to do. In reality, for many of us, this is more than a saving station. This is a feeding station. This is where my dreams get their nutrition. I'm going to say that again. This is where my dreams get their nutrition. This is the feeding place of people who believe God that something extraordinary is going to happen in their life and they want to line everything up in their lives in alignment with what God has promised to do in the Word so that they can not only have life, but that they can have it more abundantly. Somebody say more. more. Say it again. More. Say it like you're hungry. More. That's who I want to preach to. I want to preach to ravenous, radical people who are hungry for more out of their life. I may not get more days, I may not get more months, I may not get more years, I may not get more time. I just want to get more time out of my time, more days out of my day, more out of my month, more out of my year. I'm not trying to bargain with God to get 15 years or 20 years or 30 years added to my life. I just want to make sure that however many days I have that I'm maximize every day that I live it to the fullest and that I get what God has for me to get out of every day of my life can you say amen, amen. and it's to that ends that we minister and it's to that ends that we preach and we embrace the Word of God understanding that eternal life belongs to me because I'm a believer and I'm because I'm a Christian that is secured and anchored through the Word but while I'm waiting on the bus to pick me up for heaven I need some help with right now I know the by and by is already sweet it's the now and now that gets kind of nasty I'm going to say it again. I know that the by and by is already sweet. It's the now and now that gets kind of nasty. And I need God's word to prepare me how to make it through the now and now until I can get to the sweet by and by. Are you with me? There are four things in this text that I want to share with you that I believe are incredibly important and I will do so and get out of your way. The first thing I want you to understand is that Paul and Barnabas have come to Lystra and Paul is ministering much as I'm ministering right now in Lystra and while he is ministering there is a lame man in the crowd. The lame man is uh, afflicted in such a way and to such a degree that he is incapacitated in his feet and he cannot walk not only can he cannot walk but he uh, has never walked and the Bible said that while Paul was ministering he looked at him now this is important because I want to begin to talk to you about extraordinary things that God will do in your life he looked at him and the Bible said that he perceived that the man had the faith to be healed it was not that he looked at the man and said oh his condition is so bad this man needs a healing why is that important see most people think if life gets bad enough God feels sorry for you and just heals you because you're in trouble it's not going to happen because there are a lot of people in trouble. Everybody's in trouble. People all around you are in trouble. The reality is the just shall live by... Oh, you have to wake up. This is an interactive service. I'm not an entertainer. The just shall live by what? Faith. Say it again. The just shall live by? Faith. I want all my regular folks to help me with my Easter Sunday folks because they don't know what to do. The just shall live by? Faith. Oh, we're going to get there in a minute. Just sit there, baby. We'll be all right. He saw faith in the man. His legs were lame, his feet were broken, but not his head. The man believed that something could happen extraordinary in his life. And it was on the power of that premise that he spoke to him and he commanded, this is what, this is what teaching, real good teaching would do. He commanded the man to do something that his circumstances said that he couldn't do. He commanded him real good teaching ministry will challenge you to do something that you can't do. I don't need anybody to pacify me in my pain. 
I don't need anybody to comfort me in my chaos. I don't need anybody to just placate me in my crisis. I need somebody to challenge me to stand up when life has knocked me down. And so Paul looked at him without being polite or sympathetic and said, get up! And miracle of miracles, the man who was crippled, the Bible said he leaped up and started to walking. This is the first thing I want you to understand is that God is going to do extraordinary things in your life, extraordinary feats in your life, things that are not ordinary, things that are mind-boggling, things that make no sense. There are some people in this room if I let them preach right now they say if you think what God did for the lame man is something let me tell you 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 don't underestimate I know you hear a lot of people talking about church people what they're not and what what they ought to do and whatever but don't underestimate there are some people in this room who are literal testimonies that God can do extraordinary things in their lives. I mean personal things. I mean deeply conflicting, chaotic things, things that we couldn't fix and couldn't resolve. But God, in his infinite mercy, challenged us. And there are people right now who are working because of God, who have relationships because of God, who are sound in their mind because of God, who got control of themselves because of God, who kicked habits because of God, who overcame and overcame enemies because of God, who defeated low self-esteem and fear and intimidation. And they're healed in their bodies and their mind and their spirit because they believed in God. If you're one of them, you ought to say something this morning. Glory to God. I looked at it as such a miracle. It's a miracle. The, the lame man leaped up and started walking. First of all, it was a miracle. And I looked and I said, oh God, you healed this man. It's powerful. That's powerful. That's a powerful point. I'm going to use that in the sermon. It's a powerful point that you healed this man that was lame. And everybody knew he was lame. He, he was publicly lame. Have you ever been so lame that everybody knew you were lame? It's one thing to be secretly lame. It's another thing to be publicly lame. See, a lot of you got secret problems. It's another thing when your problem goes public. Isn't it funny how differently church folk treat you when your problem goes public? I won't get into that. I won't get into that. They can have a secret problem. I won't bother that. Anyway, I'm going to get out of there. Y'all not ready for that. This is easy. Let me be nice to you. The man had a public problem. The Lord touched him and he healed him. I said, this is extraordinary. God said, look a little deeper. What do you see? I said, well, I see a lame man in the crowd. And, and, and Paul spoke a word to him and he leaped up and he got healed. God said, look a little deeper. I said, Lord, I see it. You healed him by the power of your word. You used your manservant. Your manservant spoke a word to him. It changed his life and it healed him. He said, how do you know he got healed, Jake? I know he he got healed, Lord, because he started walking. He said, look a little deeper. I said, well, Lord, I don't understand what I'm supposed to see. He said, read the text again. The text clearly states, it doesn't just say that he couldn't walk. See, it's one thing for you to live half of your life, get 18 or 20, somebody drops a big stone on your foot and now you can't walk. See, that's different. Even though you still need healing and you're still lame, it's different. Because if you ever walked and then you couldn't walk, if God healed you, at least you knew how to walk. But if you had never walked, even if God reversed the damage in your feet and fixed it where you could physically walk, you would have to go through months of therapy and training to get your neurological system and all of your brain facilities to be reorganized and restructured in such a way that you'd be able to get mobility and movement and they'd have to massage you and work your leg and work your muscles in order to get them back up to functioning because this man had never walked 
talked before. What I like about God is when he does something extraordinary in your life, you don't have to go through the training. You don't have to go through the therapy. It doesn't take you years to recover, but God can in a flash. You don't have to have 12 steps, 10 steps, five steps. I mean, one step and you start walking in the stuff that you couldn't even walk into before because God does extraordinary things. I wish there was somebody in this room that God just blessed you with something. It didn't take you as long as it should have took you. It didn't take you as long as it took other people, but God just said, get up, and you started walking. You didn't even know how to walk, but get up. Look at somebody and say, I can do it. I don't, I don't even know how I can do it. I can just do it. There are people who can sing, never had a voice lesson. They can do it. There are people who can draw, never had an art class. They can, they can just do it. There, there are people who came from dysfunctional families, but they got a functional relationship. Had never been training. The, the odds are against you. You realize that some of you are living out what the statistics say you shouldn't be able to live out. You realize that according to the statistics, you, is there anybody here who against all odds Nothing going for you. Didn't come from good stuff. Everything wasn't lined up right. Came from a chaotic path. But God just raised you up. And you started walking into something by the grace and the power of God. Touch somebody and say, that's extraordinary. That's extraordinary. What God did in your life is extraordinary. What God did with you is extraordinary. After you've been through what you've been through, for you to be here today is extraordinary. The fact that you didn't lose your mind. In fact, while we're just being open and naked, can I tell you, people have never really heard your real testimony. Because you know people cannot handle Let me talk to y'all. You know people cannot handle your real testimony. They don't half believe that you went through what you told them about. It would blow their mind to see how far God raised you up out of nowhere. And that's why I have to praise them. I know it gets on your nerves. I know it's too loud. You don't think it requires all of that. But that's because you could always walk. But on behalf of the lame people who were feet were turned every which way but loose, for me to walk, I get excited. My, my miracle is your normal. Oh, y'all don't hear me. And so... Look at somebody and say, that's extraordinary. See, the reason I keep having you look at the person next to you is because the person next to you has been through some extraordinary things. And it's no accident that you're sitting beside them this morning. Because I guarantee you that God didn't let you sit within, without being at least within three feet of somebody who is aware of the extraordinary power of God. Maybe you don't know about it. Maybe the sister beside you doesn't know about it. But I bet you that brother sitting behind you knows something about it. I bet you that lady on the left of you in the front row, I bet you that lady knows about the goodness of the power. I bet you all the way in the balcony, all the way in the top, all the way in that corner, I bet you there's somebody back over there. I guarantee you there's somebody in that section right there or way over there on the outer aisle who knows God can do extraordinary things. If you're one of the people, touch them and say, I'm a witness, I'm a witness. Even if you're sitting beside somebody hateful and indifferent and quiet and won't look at you, just tell them anyway, I'm a witness! Good God, I'm a witness! I'm a, oh my God, I'm a sanctified. I better quit, I feel myself getting stirred up. If I get stirred up in here, I'm a witness! My 
for me to go ahead. I bring my own stuff with me. <laughs> I was the kind of guy in the world, I'd bring my own bottle. I didn't know whether you was going to be ready or not. I brought my own stuff. And when I get ready to have church, I don't have to have. Hey! So, let me behave. So, my first point is God does extraordinary things. My second point, <laughs> oh, oh, you're waking up now. Come on, it's going to be all right. Come on, come on, come on. We got to go somewhere today. <laughs> you and me, we got to take a journey today. Yes, 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 yes. This is not CNN, this is not TBN, and this is not HBO. You didn't come to watch this show. You came to have an experience with the Lord. <laughs> oh, yeah. So if that little cute dress is too tight, unbutton something loose. <laughs> come on, girlfriend. <laughs> come on, baby. Come on, baby. I got so old, I can't carry you across the river. We're going to get there. <laughs> Number two. The Bible said that when these secular heathens saw the apostles speak to this lame man and speak to him until he got this extraordinary miracle, they didn't know what to think about it. And so they said, they said, these men are gods amongst us. These men are gods amongst us. Let, let's, let's build, let's offer up sacrifice to them and honor them as gods. I know you would think in your mind you would never do it, but we live in a society that loves to make gods out of people. We live in a society of people who loves um, to make gods out of people. I'm not talking about honoring people. I think you should honor them. I think you should respect them. I'm talking about worshiping them. We worship people for the craziest reasons. Some little girl gets up in a talent show and she can sing, she hits a high note, and somebody offers her a record deal. Now she's a recording artist, and we come to her and say, because you can sing, you are now a role model. Some little joker in the hood who learned how to run from running from police officers gets on the football field grabs a ball and starts running. And we say, now you should speak to your generation because you can run. This stuff makes my head hurt. He should teach them how to run. He can't teach them how to live. Just because you can sing doesn't mean that you've got something to say. heroes and deify people and then destroy them. People set you up so they can watch you fall. <laughs> they make a sport out of it. They make a career out of building you up and killing you. So Paul and Barnabas rushed down there and they ran their garments and they said, no! They said, you will not make gods out of us. Paul and Barnabas knew that eventually the people would discover that they were human and kill them. As it was then, <laughs> so it is today. And he says to them, watch this, he says this phrase, 
that I want you, I want you to learn. See, I challenge you to wake up because I want, I, w- I want to say something to you. I don't, I don't want to entertain you. I want to tell you something. I want to tell you. If I'm not going to tell you nothing, I could go home. I don't need to be here. And you could too. I come to tell you something. There's a phrase in the scripture. He said, we are men of like passions. We are men of like passions. Here lies the second point. Paul insists, in spite of the fact that he did extraordinary feats, he insisted on number two, being an ordinary person. Because the greatest miracle is not that the lame man got healed. It is that God used an ordinary person to do it. Why is this important? As long as you can come to church or anywhere and look at a few special people and say they are special people, it gives you a license not to try. But when the special people say, I'm just like you, and if God bless me, he can bless you to see, this is the missing message in the miracle. It's not that there are exceptional people because the truth of the matter is there's nothing but ordinary people. But the difference between some people and other people is that there are some ordinary people who do not allow their ordinariness to stop them from extraordinary faith. There are some people in this room that believe God for ridiculous stuff. That's why you can't tell everybody what you're believing him for because they look at your ordinary self and say how in the world did you think that you're going to do this being like you are that's why I believe in God because God uses ordinary now I want to challenge my ordinary people where are my ordinary people ordinary people Don't let success change you. Let me get you ready for this. Because God's going to do something extraordinary in your life. And I got to get you ready for this. No matter how God operates in your life, never lose your ordinariness. Because God gets the glory when you remain ordinary. When you, when you just say, look, I'm just like you. See, that's the real message that God wants to convey. It's not that there are exceptional people. It's that we have an exceptional God. Our God is so exceptional and so extraordinary that he can take an ordinary person and bless them in extraordinary way. I want to hear my ordinary people give God some praise. Yeah, 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 that's right. Yeah, that's right. I'm praising him. Yeah, I know. I'm just a guy, but God's going to bless me. Yeah, I messed up, but God's going to bless me. I'm on my second marriage, but God's going to bless me. Got pregnant out of wedlock, but God's going to bless me. Dropped out of college, but God's going to bless me. Got cheated out of my job, but God's going to bless me. There's nothing special about me. There's something special about God. And if God be for you. Ordinary people. Ordinary people. Ordinary people. God wants to use you because there's somebody sitting around you who stopped trying and they stopped fighting because they've used their ordinariness for an excuse. But Paul said, don't deify me because you need to understand we are men of like passions just like you. And yet, God bless me anyway. I want the saints to tell somebody, God bless me anyway. He blessed me anyway. He blessed me anyway. He blessed me anyway. 
an ordinary person with an ordinary life, ordinary challenges, ordinary struggles, ordinary problems, ordinary dilemmas, and yet God blessed me anyway. He raised some things through me. He touched some things through me. He made some things that were broken be whole again. Look what the Lord has done. That's why no matter how high I get, I'm going to keep on praising his name. I get joy when I think about what the Lord has done for me. I know that some of you allow other people to intimidate you, but when I get ready to praise God, I let nobody intimidate me. I praise him whenever I get ready, because if it wasn't for the Lord, I wouldn't even be here. I wouldn't even be alive. I would have lost my mind. I would have died on crack cocaine. If it wasn't for the Lord, I don't know, I don't know, I don't, I don't know where I might be. So I can't afford to worry about impressing you. Where are my ordinary people? They insisted on being ordinary. Don't lose your ordinariness. Don't lose your ordinariness. Don't lose sight of who you are as a person. Don't forfeit your right to be human, trying to be divine. Because ultimately, you will still bump into your own humanity. Ah, God. Oh, I wish you knew how rich that is. I wish you knew how good that is. Sometimes you have to live 30 years to figure that out. <laughs> oh, his strength is made perfect in weakness. He loves to take two fish and five loaves of bread and feed a smorgasbord because he'll take not enough and make it more than enough. <laughs> so, my ordinary people, my third point may interest you. Ordinary people that God blesses to do extraordinary things, point number three, when you do them, you will come into extraordinary attack. This is your mission should you decide to take it. Ordinary person, if you're going to believe God for extraordinary things, expect extraordinary attack. The men came down from Lyconia. They came down not to debate Paul nor Barnabas, not to correct them or encourage them or teach them or treat them or entreat them or train them. They came to kill them. Oh, listen. There are some things that will be sent against you to kill you because you're ordinary doing extraordinary things an extraordinary attack is a part of the process I'm gonna help you define this are there any ordinary people who are sitting in here going through a time in your life where you're going through extraordinary attack have you ever can we just talk? I'll preach sometime. I just want to talk to you. Have you ever said, this attack doesn't even make sense? I don't even understand how I could be going through this. I don't even understand what they fell out with me over. <laughs> I don't even understand what we're fighting about. Is there anybody in here who's going through an extraordinary attack in your finances? Don't even make any sense how you could get in that much debt. In your relationships, struggling with people, you don't even know what the struggle is over. In your work life, going through chaos on your job and you don't even know why. I came to tell you why. To him whom much is given, much is required and if you're going to take the extraordinary blessing you got to be prepared for the extraordinary attack they came to kill him 
I'm going to help you identify. If you're, if you're one of these ordinary people who's going through point number three, an extraordinary attack, I'm going to help you identify. They tried to kill him by stoning him. If you're one of those people, see, stoning is not like being shot with an arrow nor thrust through with a sword because those are quick and sudden deaths. But stonings, one thing comes and then another. And before you can straighten out this, here comes that. And you take this, and then you take that, and you take this over here, and this one knocks you over there. Is there anybody in here that before you can get through going through one thing, here comes something else. You survived that one. This one knocks you over this way. This one knocks you down. This one knocks you over on the floor. After a while, you're laying out on the floor. It's an extraordinary attack sent against you to kill you. The Bible said that they pulled Paul out of the city, drug him out, supposing. <laughs> this is where they messed up. Supposing him to be dead. There are some times in your life that life has knocked you out cold and the enemy will assume I mean they'll be planning your funeral <laughs> picking out what they're gonna wear what kind of casket they're gonna put you in who gonna marry your husband <laughs> Who gonna raise your children? I mean, they are sure you are dead. But my mother used to tell me, every closed eye ain't sleep, and every goodbye ain't gone. High five somebody and tell them I'm coming back. I've been through hell and high water, but I'm coming back. Uh, can I preach a minute in here? Can I preach a minute in here? Where are my ordinary people? God's getting ready to give you point number four, an extraordinary deliverance. God's getting ready to give you an extraordinary deliverance. Touch somebody and tell them I'm coming out of this. Well, I'm almost finished. But the Bible said that they drug Paul out of the city and they thought in their own minds, <laughs> they said, Paul, you did some extraordinary things, but you're still an ordinary man. And if you come into an extraordinary attack, you will die like an ordinary man. <laughs> and Paul just laid there like he was dead. But the Bible said that while they supposed him to be dead, <laughs> surrounded by people, he opened up his eyes and began, oh, wait a minute, I need to stop and thank God because when God gets ready to bring you out, he will bring you out publicly. <laughs> He will bring you out in the presence of your enemies. He will bring you out in the face of your critics. He will bring you out in front of people who said you'd never be back. Uh, I'm wondering this Easter Sunday morning, since we're going to talk about resurrections, I'm wondering if you understand that if God raised Paul up, and if God raised Jesus up, and if that same spirit that was in Jesus is down inside of you, do you understand? Can I preach like we did a long time ago? Do you understand <laughs> that the same God that raised up Jesus and the same God that raised up Paul, that same God, oh, he's able to raise you up. Flap your neighbor and say, I'm getting up now. I'm 
getting up now. I've been down a long time, but I'm getting up now. I almost lost my mind, but I'm getting up now. I ran out of money, but I'm getting up now. I ran out of friends, but I'm getting up now because God is giving me an extraordinary deliverance. Somebody say yeah. I want to say this, when God brings you out, don't limit yourself to the ordinary, but expect the extraordinary. When God gets ready to bring you out, he will bring you out so fast that people won't be sure whether you are ever dead or not. When God gets ready to bring you out, is there anybody in here that's ever seen God bring Bring you out of trouble so fast the devil thought sure you was gone for good but God in his mercy said not yet stop the funeral shut down the hearse close up the casket I'm getting ready to give her an extraordinary deliverance I better quit cuz I feel like preaching after all this is Easter Sunday morning this is a time that we recognize that Jesus, they hung him high and they stretched him wide and they thought if they nailed him to the tree that he'd never be back again. But my Lord and your God came back from the dead. Oh, I know it didn't happen Friday. It didn't happen Friday at lunch. It didn't happen Friday night. It didn't happen Saturday for breakfast. It didn't happen by Saturday for dinner. But early Sunday morning, touch your neighbor and tell them this is my Sunday to get up out of this mess. This is my Sunday to let God arise and his enemies be scattered. This is my Sunday to make a fool out of my enemies. You meant it for evil, but God's gonna make it good. Somebody holler, I'm back. I've been through hell, but I'm back. I got a bloody nose, but I'm back. I got a black eye, but I'm back. I'm in debt, but I'm back. Repossessed car, but I'm back. File bankruptcy, but I'm back. Been through a divorce, but I'm back. Don't let life whip you. Don't let life hold you down. The Bible said, if God be for you, he's more. Somebody holler more. Somebody holler more. Somebody shout more. He's more than the world against you. I feel a praise down in my soul. I thank you, Lord. You're a God of second chances. You're a God of new beginnings. Just, 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 just when they thought I was dead, you made a way of escape for me. Thank you, Jesus. I thank you, Lord. I thank you for my blessing. Somebody give God a praise in this place. Praise Him. Praise Him for an extraordinary deliverance. I believe in extraordinary deliverance. I believe in extraordinary miracles. I believe in the power of God. Somebody open your mouth and say yes. Shake your neighbor by the hand and say, neighbor, it's going to be it will be extraordinary how God delivers you. It's going to blow your mind. Yes, it is. Somebody help me pray them. Press down, shake it together, run it over. 
Run it over! Run it over! Run it over! Run it over! Walk out of it! Walk out of it! Walk out of it! Walk out! Walk out! Yes! Yes! Sunday, they're going to get up out of the thing that held them down. Touch some of the people say it's Sunday. Do you know what time it is? Do you know what time it is? It's Sunday. Resurrection time. Getting up time. It's time. Yes. 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 Yeah, 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 yeah. ordinary people who had an extraordinary praise that will whip out a can of extraordinary praise and bust it open in here right now. Come on, come on. Just a hundred people.
Lift your hands all over the place and begin to glorify God. Woo! My God. Father, we bless you. We honor you. We give you glory. We honor your name. You're extraordinary. We're ordinary. And yet somehow, you keep on blessing us. That's the gospel. That's the gospel. That's the good news. That God can use ordinary people. Thank you for the word that you gave us today. Thank you for what you said in my soul today. Your word is extraordinary. <laughs> Your word is extraordinary. I honor you. 